Hi guys, and welcome back to Scale Motor. I understand it's been a little bit of a a little bit of a delay since the last video, and I do apologise for that. The reason being is I've had quite a lot on. Um, I've had models to build, um, but I've also been working again from the office, uh, which does take up quite a bit of time. I'm also uh, 3D printing things, so I've had a few orders to uh, to get through. Um, and I'm also kind of struggling with like any time I have left over, I sit at the bench and I'm like, I can edit a video or I can carry on building. And it's a bit of a, a bit of a struggle to decide which one to do sometimes. But uh, I realize I've got to get this video out. I had over a hundred gigabytes of footage to sort through. Um, a lot of that was, was the chain set. So there's going to be a separate video dedicated to the chain, uh, the top studio chain set. Um, Currently, I'm just showing uh, th this footage will be shown in that that next video. So I guess it's going to be part two B, or, or not to be. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to quickly go through this now. And what, what I'm doing here is I'm just using a bit of solder um, through the holes in the photo etch sprockets just to line everything up, just to make sure when we do glue things, um, it you know it's going to be where it needs to be. So what I'm doing is threading that solder through. Um, this comes with the chain set and it's used to make the, the bolts um, on the nuts for the, the sprocket itself. So we've threaded that through. We're gonna pop a little bit of CA glue on where it's not gonna be seen and we're just gonna push that sprocket down um, along the solder and then it all lines up nicely. And then we're gonna do the same to this backing plate, which I'm, I'm which I believe is the kind of the mounting bracket, I suppose, or the face of the wheel where the sprocket actually mounts to. And we're using that solder as a guide to push that down and make sure everything seats nicely. And then we can pull that solder out. And there we go. We have one sprocket. Checking everything's lined up, and we are good. So next up, we're using our solder again, um, and this is to create the the bolts for the sprocket or the sprocket nuts, um, because the wheel will have a shaft protruding out, and then the sprocket goes on top, and then you use the nuts to put the sprocket on rather than bolts. Um, and this was just three pieces of photo etch. Uh, so we've put a little bit of glue on the solder and then we're just going to slide the photo etch over the top and push it down to that glue and the glue should hold it in place nicely. I'm just going to go a little bit quick um, and do the same uh, with the next part. We're hoping that glue hasn't set yet. Just in case, we're going to put another tiny, tiny dab of CA glue on. We don't want too much because it can push out the side of the photo etch and you can lose the shape of the photo etch and it can just look like a big kind of frosty blob, which is uh, which is not something we want. Even though it is going to get painted, um, once the paint hits it, if it is a big frosty blob, you, you will notice. Um, so we're just doing very, very small amounts of glue. And then once all the photo etch bits are on the solder, we're just going to post it through the hole. I'm just going to make sure this sits nicely. And we can get it all straight. And then again, a tiny, tiny dab of CA glue just under where the bolt head would sit. And we're just gonna pull that through, hold it there for a couple of seconds and make sure we are solid. And then we can come in with our side cutters and just snip away the back. We can use our good side cutters just because it's, uh, it's soldered, it's very, very soft, so it's easy to snip. We've done another five of those. Um, no, we've done another four, sorry. I didn't show it though, because we'd be here forever. And next up, we're gonna move into the primer. And we're using the UMP Black 
primer um, straight out of the bottle and then just give it a little test spray there I've got my sacrificial cutting map down um, and we're just gonna slowly build up the layers we've got some small bits um, so you just want to be a little bit careful you don't want to flood the parts um, and we're just gonna get a nice kind of dusty looking coat over first um, just to you know make sure we get the coverage we want and then we're gonna go a little heavier I think I, I finished up with three coats in total um, the good thing about this primer the reason I love it so much is it is quite forgiving um, if you do go on a little bit too thick that's not a problem um, it self levels really really nicely and if you're in uh, a bit of a rush you can dry it with the airbrush you can actually watch it dry before your eyes uh, and this and the gloss black primer that they do it, it it's good enough to leave as a color by itself um, so I have used it in some places as the final color Now with the, the discs, because they're carbon ceramic, I left the, the kind of dusty coat on um, and that gave quite a good effect because of the uh, the plastic underneath. Next up we are painting a couple of bits and bobs in our X18 semi-gloss black. This is thinned uh, about 60-40 um, with MLT, Mr. Leveling Thinner. Uh, I started off at 50-50 and worked my way up until it, it you know, looked nice in the cup and then sprayed away. And again with this we're going to slowly build up the coats. Um, it can be a little hard to see going black on black. So just angle your parts to the light and, and you'll be able to see the paint hitting it. And there's there's a difference between the, um, the black primer and the semi-gloss black from Tamiya. So you can see a slight difference in the sheen which will help. Next up we're using our X32 Titanium Silver, again this is an acrylic, I didn't have the LP unfortunately, but it is thinned with Mr. Levelin thinner, exactly the same as uh, as previous. Um, I think from now on I'm going to try uh, something that I see Paul over at ISM do and has been recommended by him, is that I'm going to try and use some uh, rapid thinner for the metallic paints I use because it's supposed to kind of give the the metallic particles less time to settle which um, which gives for a, a kind of a nice uh, metallic effect um, but for now the Mr. Levelin thinner will work and we're applying this the exact same way we applied previous paints a nice kind of thin coat to start off with uh, and then we'll, we'll build it up and again I think with all these parts I ended up with three coats and this is the uh, the rear sprocket which we made earlier that is primed with the UMP uh, as well it works great on photo etch uh, and this is our didn't quite catch that I think it's gold titanium it is um, and we're just using this for the inserts for the front wheel. There's two kind of um, spacers, uh, which you would get on a on a real bike too, just not this size and shape. But, uh, but yeah, they go on the the front, and then the front wheel kind of rotates around them. Um, so rather than the scrape going through the actual front wheel for the axle, this makes a kind of separate kind of separate connection for the wheel to spin on um, and there we go this is polished brass this is one of my favorite um, my favorite alclad paints 
Um, these these are just straight out of the bottle. Um, again, I'm not certain of my pressure. I just know I've turned it down a little and I've tightened the, the trigger tension on the airbrush to spray the alclads just because they like to go on a little thinner. Um, I'm just using this to spray half of the links on the chain set because I did get the the wrong chain set. It's supposed to be gold outer links, but I got silver outer links. Um, I think the 2004 bike has the silver outer links. I'm not certain. Um, I just know I got the wrong one. We also done our calipers in the same colour. One thing I like about Alclad paints um, is you can kind of, depending on the way you apply them, they give a different effect. Um, and that's true again with this chrome. Um, what I didn't show was I did do a uh, gloss black base for the, um, the Alclad colours, uh, which is standard. I just used um, LP1, uh, thinned with Mr. Leveling, thinner about 70%. And I went for about three coats and I got it kind of nice and um, nice and glossy sorry and then uh, we slowly build up the alclad over the top and this is uh, like I said alclad chrome and we apply this very thinly and slowly build it up if you if you apply the alclad chrome slowly and thinly you'll see it turn into chrome before your eyes it's, it's really really cool um, but if you if you apply it heavier you get less of a sheen but it still does look metal it's I don't know if it's kind of like an official method but you do get different effects it's really cool um, just practice play with some spoons see what you can get and next up we are painting the fork bottoms and this is uh, metallic brown um, it's zero paints. I think it's ZP seven o three five four something like that. Anyway, it's, it's similar to the Tamiya metallic brown. And the only reason I've got this is when I done the two thousand and four um, Yamaha about a year ago now. Um, I couldn't find the metallic brown anywhere, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go with the zero paints um, just so I don't have to bother thinning stuff. And that's before I knew of the dangers. Um, which you can face with zero paints, um, with it being such a hot paint. Um, so what we've done here is we've applied it very, very thin, um, and we've left it about five minutes in between, at least five minutes in between each coat, just to make sure we uh, we let that paint off gas so we don't end up melting any plastic. And now we're back without titanium silver, and we're just gonna brush paint a couple of things. Um, so on the suspension, this bottom piece needed to be titanium silver, and it would have taken me about three days to mask, because <laughs> I'm not a fan of masking things. Um, so I just opted to paint it with a brush. Um, the Tamiya uh, titanium silver does go on quite nice with a brush. Um, and there's some Mr. Leveling thinner knocking about in this bottle because once I finish airbrushing, it just goes straight in the bottle, straight back in. Um, so that that has helped with with the brush painting. Um, but yeah, it's just this little bit, um, and we're going to go over. Um, you want to try and kind of get it in one pass. Um, you don't want to be going over and over the same part because it can can kind of pull the paint up and um, and just make it a bit of a nightmare. Now we've got our LP61, which is metallic grey. Um, I need more of this. I am very, very low. There's a little... I've had to put a little drop of uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner in, shake it up, and then uh, go away with the painting. Um, we're just going to be painting the, um, the mounts, the brackets, I suppose, for the uh, brake and the clutch. couple of bits and bobs to do off camera apologies for that <laughs> so yeah again this this would have been one which would have taken a while to mask so 
we opted for the brush paint. Next up, we are going to mask the centers of the brake discs um, and just get those. Again, we're going to brush paint them just because it's super quick, super simple. Um, what was not super quick and super simple was this. Um, this is probably my fourth or fifth attempt at getting the circle. I need one of the display circle cutters. They're so much, they look so much easier to use. Um, just kind of with this, it's pretty much guessing, pushing, pulling. Um, but we got that in the end, we got that masked up and there's just a small kind of lip around the center which is like a, a brighter kind of metal looking color. So once we got this circle on, which like I said was probably my fourth or fifth attempt, um, yeah once we got that on we just grabbed our brush. Um, I can't remember at the moment what color paint I used. It might have been LP11. We'll see now. Oh no, that could be that could be our LP61. I think it is our LP. No, that's, that's rather bright. But that was either LP61 or LP11 silver. Um, I have to go back and double check. Look, actually, the bike is next to me now, and it does look like it is the LP61. It's the same color as the as the master cylinder and uh, and the clutch uh, master cylinder too. So, yep, that's metallic grey. Um, we just went around and brush painted it. We treated both discs to the same um, the same treatment. Even though it is masked up, if you are masking stuff and brush painting them, I wouldn't kind of just go all out super thick and just think, yeah, we're going to be fine because I think with the brush paint it goes on a little bit thicker. Um, so there's actually a little bit more chance of a kind of bleed under um, from my experience so just still be careful even though it is masked okay and now we're building up the the rear suspension uh, i do apologize for that very very unsightly um rash looking thing on my uh on my forearm on the left um that's normally where i wear my watch and i've got a um i've got a metal strap on my watch and recently the weather has been so warm um, and the, the watch had been rubbing yeah so I, I've taken it off and now I look rabid but um, <laughs> that's all cleared up now thankfully you can see where I've been wearing my watch in the sun because I've got a nice uh, a nice light band going around my wrist but yeah, we're just following the instructions to put together that um, that rear shock. Super simple to go together. The spring came with the, the front fork set. Uh, so it was pre-painted, so we didn't need to print our own. Just making sure everything goes in. And then we're going to grab out our Tamiya black panel liner. And we're just going to do a little bit of panel lining. Oh, and then the bike magically disappears. Um, we're going to do a little bit of panel lining on our our rear shock. I haven't gone for too much panel lining on this whole kind of build just because, I mean, the bikes will get dirty but that's after use. Um, normally when you look at these, these MotoGP bikes, they are really, really clean so and you know there's not old parts on them they they're replaced often um and upgraded or rebuilt so so i haven't gone for much kind of grubbiness or i'm going for any grubbiness really but um but yeah there's not too much panel lining and now we're just drilling the holes in the calipers for the um the quick release banjos or brake line um, connectors 
uh, these parts came with the top studio set uh, i had to cut off the original molded in ones um which were a little soft um in detail um these the ones from top studio look six thousand times better in my opinion the same goes on both calipers um just chop them off and drill a i think it was a 0.5 millimeter hole where the calipers connect uh not the caliper sorry the um It's gone. It's gone. The quick release brake line connectors, I believe they are called. And here they are. Um, they were painted with Alclad chrome, um, and then we brush painted some clear red over the kind of quick re quick release parts, and then we did put a bit of semi gloss black on the bottom where it actually connects into the caliper. Take your time doing this you don't want to force it in because these are um cast resin they can be a little brittle um as i found out um many many times while working with cast resin and being a bit too eager and uh, not taking my time I've, I've broke many things um things have had to be glued back together um yeah so so just take your time um if it doesn't if you've, you you haven't drilled your hole big enough, don't try and force it in. Just go re-drill the hole or ream it out or something, and then uh, it's better for it to be a little loose um, than be a little tight and you break it trying to put it in. Now, um, after all those uh, those double entendres, um, we're just going to move. Oh no, there's more. So now I'm just screwing the bottom in. Um, this is the bottom of the suspension there's just a couple of screws um as per the instructions if i wanted to go all out what i probably would have done is these screws i would have i would have not used them um and i would have got some um some rod some brass rod or some aluminium rod um and just use that in place and then maybe put a pe bolt head on top But they are kind of out of the way um, on the finished models. You can't really see them unless you're looking for them. And with the bottom screws being black and the bottom of the frame being black, it, it does kind of mask them quite well. So now we are sticking some things to the rear wheel first. Uh, uh, sorry, this is the front wheel. Um, we've got our front discs. Uh, they were just little tiny bits of PE going all the way around. Um, which are meant to simulate the rivets which hold the outer ceramic part, the carbon ceramic part of the disc onto the disc carrier, I suppose, the metal part in the middle which actually connects to the wheel. Um, there's only one way these can go on, um, so just uh, keep an eye out for the little locator pin um, and you can pop them in. They can go on either side. Um, but you don't want to kind of miss the locator pin because one side will be higher than the other and then your wheel's not going to go on or if it does go on you've got to turn the wheel and the disc will just fall off and shatter um okay so there we go we've just popped in those inserts and then um what i do here is i put the wheel in and then realize that um I'm gonna to have to take that wheel off later on because there's some photo etch to add to the bottom um, and a couple of things a couple of other things to add but again this is just done with the screw from the Tamiya kit um, there's a couple of little like detail bits I want to I wanted to add um, I haven't decided yet um, but on one side of these bottoms of the forks there's a molded in um, molded in nut with a wheel nut for the axle um, and I'm either going to paint that silver or, silver or I'm going to chop it off and replace it with a cast resin piece that came with the top studio set 
I haven't decided yet, um, just because the, the bit that come with the top studio set looks a little big. Um, and we'll, we'll take a look um, and I'll, I'll think that through. Just tighten it up, you don't want to go too tight because your wheel's not going to move and you could uh, break bits further up. But there we go, we've got a nice spinning wheel. Wheelie good. <sighs> okay, and now what I'm doing is I'm just making some reservoirs. Um, all I've done is I've used some clear sprue. I've just chopped um, chopped a little bit off uh, to the size about of the reservoir. We've drilled a hole in the bottom. And now what I'm gluing in is a piece of fiber optic cable. Um, I got this from Prime Miniatures. Um, I got loads just for lighting models up. Um, you buy a meter length, which is more, if, you know, there's, there's tons. Um, but it's also great for adding to clear parts, um, which I'm doing here. So I've just got a little bit of super glue and we've popped that in the bottom. And then um, that's where the, uh, the brake line will connect to. And then we used a piece of guitar string for the mount, um, which again, we just drilled another 0.5 millimeter hole. And now we're using some very, very thin wire. This stuff comes with the top studio super detail set. And um, we're going to use this for the, um, the, uh, the lock wire, um, on the, on the grips. Sorry, I, I struggled with that there. Um, but essentially, this is just a bit of wire that's wrapped around the grips um, and twisted. And on the real bike, what it will do is it will stop the grips from moving or being pulled off. Um, and again, it's just super, super thin wire. Um, we're just going to fold it around the grip and then um, kind of wrap it around itself, just twist it off, um, and then just snip the excess off with our side cutters. There's two on each grip, um, and we want to kind of make sure that the the tail or the bit we snip off is underneath, um, not just because it, it it's out of the way and you're not going to see it, but on the real bike when they're gripping on, if it's on top, it's going to be digging into their hand. So with it underneath, their hand will miss that tail and it's not going to get any kind of digging in. So we've also drilled some little holes in the um, the bottom of the fork legs where there were little protrusions to connect the calipers on because the Top Studio Super Detail set does come with these uh, turned metal caliper spacers. Um, and again, we're just drilling a little hole we test fitted and then we popped a little bit of our CA in and then we're just going to connect our caliper spacers in there. Be careful when you're drilling the holes, you want to try and get them dead centre. Um, once you snip off the um, the moulded in pieces, um, you, you'll be left with a little dot, so you can use that as a guide for your drilling. Um, I suggest drilling a small hole first and try and get that in the centre and then drill the normal size or the size you need. And here we go, we're just putting together the front fork set from the Tamiya. This is a uh, aftermarket set. Um, easy to go together, you just slip the sleeve on and then slip the actual fork leg on. And what we've done here is we've snipped off the connector points on the, uh, the grips and the master cylinders. We've drilled a little hole and we've put in some guitar wire. And then we're going to use this green tube from uh, Zero, um, from Hero Boy. Um, uh, we're using that to replicate the um, the brake fluid in the the lines. Um, I may paint a clear green on the um, on the actual reservoirs. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to have to look up more reference photos because I'm not sure if it can be seen through the reservoir or if the green is actually just the colour of the tube. 
but we'll uh, we'll take a look at that and we'll button up any little details like that before we uh, before we put the fairings on. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to display this with the fairings off. I think I will because quite a bit of work has gone into the uh, the underneath under the fairings, so I'm just going to make sure that um, you know if, if I don't display with the fairings off, I want to take a lot of photos before I do put the fairings on. And we just drilled again some little holes in the the triple tree um, where we could connect our reservoirs. So we've got one on there, and we've cut. We've got loads of this. I think we had about a meter of it again. So we're just going to cut it too long first, and then we can, when it's mounted, we can get it to the right size. And we're going to chop a bit off. Make sure we snip all the way through. Bit of a nightmare with the tip of the snippers. I think they're uh, they're blunt in now. I think I'm I'm gonna need some more. And then we're just gonna connect this onto that guitar string which we uh, put in earlier. Shouldn't need any glue, thankfully. Um, should just stay on nicely because of the kind of tension of it. There's not much tension, but obviously because the tubing kind of wants to stay straight that'll push out in a certain way and it'll, it'll hold it on nicely so now we've got the back wheel um, which could be connecting a few little bits and bobs first up we've got our rear brake disc which is um, just two pieces of PE um, I haven't got that on uh, on film um, I had a couple of issues with uh, with my camera which I have been having a lot recently um, just so busy and, and when I'm kind of jumping into it and forgetting to click record or forgetting to transfer stuff across and realizing my, my storage is full um, but anyway it's just super simple just two pieces of PE you stick together um, now we were um, putting on our our sprocket which we built earlier the rear sprocket and um, the, the solder was protruding out the back just a little bit too much so what we done is we snipped it first with the uh, with our snippers um, and again it still didn't fit that great so we come in with a uh, the Tamiya basic files and we just filed away any other protrusions and this is why I like to test fit um, test fit if it doesn't fit remove something then test fit again to make sure it fits don't just trust your work because if I put some glue on there, that would have been stuck. If I tried to pull it off, I would have bent something, pulled some paint off, or, you know, I would have broke something 100%. But there's a little bit of PE on the back, um, and it just slightly fits into the hole on the wheel. So we're just going to put a bit of glue on the inside, and then seat that in there, and the glue should hold it in place. Lovely jubbly. Um, then it was super simple, just slot it in. And now what we're doing is we've drilled a hole and we're just making it bigger. And this is for our front sprocket. I'll go over this in more detail in in the next video. Um, we should be up in a couple of days because I've got everything recorded. I've got you know I've got it all done. I just need to uh, to voice over it and um, and export it. Uh, so it shouldn't be too long. Um, but here, the front sprocket is just two pieces of PE stuck together with a metal shaft in the middle. Um, and another piece of PE glued onto the top of that metal shaft so it doesn't push all the way through the sprocket. Now I did have a problem when I was connecting the chain. I was pushing down on this centre piece, this the shaft, to get it to you know stay still so it didn't pull out. Um, this shaft isn't glued in, otherwise the wheel wouldn't turn. So... I was pushing down and I pushed it into the engine um, so I had to I had to use a, um, a screw in the end which I had left over from the MP44 kit because I used the super detail set I didn't use the screw to keep the wheels on so I used that screw which is what you'll see later on in the video and again I'll go through this in the next video but now every time I pick the bike up and move it around I can hear that shaft tinkering around inside the engine which is 
really annoying. Um, now my model has turned into some sort of maraca, but um, but it, it's all right. We got we got it on in the end. And now I'm just connecting the two ends of the top studio chain together. Um, this is really fiddly, um, and there are a couple of ways you can do it. Um, we've got pure. I've got the chain on. Um, pretty much at this point, I was complete um, until I realised that it just seemed maybe one link too long, um, which you will see. It seems kind of baggy. Um, which in hindsight I probably should have left it because when it came to I thought you know what no I'm gonna take that link out and I did make a couple of mistakes um, I did have to reconnect the chain to itself in a few different places um, and now it is super duper tight um, again I'll go over this more in depth in the next video Once we've got it wrapped around the uh, the rear sprocket, we're just gonna wiggle it in so it goes down to where the front sprocket sits. Uh, it can be a little fiddly; it can tuck behind the engine, which is slightly annoying. Which is why I'm coming in from the back here just to push it over and then making sure it's not all bunched up. As you can see, I. I'm not having much fun putting this in. Um, I do really enjoy building the chains. Um, the one I done on the Honda RC213V did come out a lot better than this. Um, not sure why, but the the roller pins just seem a little different. Um, anyway, I'm just going to get that front chain where it needs to go. And then we just pop the front sprocket in, wrapped the chain around the front sprocket. And then you can see we've got a uh, we've got a moving chain, uh, but it is a little loose. And you see where I'm pushing down on our centre shaft now. That is what I was doing when I had uh, the problem, which turned the bike into a maraca. That's what I was doing just to kind of get it tight and hold it into place. You see, because it is loose when the wheel is turning, the chain is turning and it's also coming off the sprocket um, because there's not enough kind of tension on it to keep it pulled into the teeth, if you, if you follow. Um, it's quite confusing to explain, but yeah, I, I decided I had to take a link out. But again, like I said, I'll go over all that in more depth in my next video. And there we go. Like I said, I had to take everything apart. Um, here we are actually putting things together again. Um, there was just two little PE kind of brackets which go on the bottom. Um, of the forks around the axle and these are to hold the wheel speed sensors I believe. I had to take the wheel off to put the actual sensor rings on and uh, and the sensor pickup kind of bracket. Um, I didn't show all this kind of making the little tiny PE bits because um, these little brackets are, are literally just one piece with like two pieces glued on top. In the next video where I go into the um, the detail set side of, side of things, the more kind of electronic boxes and, and brackets and things, I do go a bit further into depth with the photo etch. Um, but if that's something you want to see a more in-depth video on photo etch, just let me know and in um, up and coming videos I can either do a separate video or go more in-depth with photo etch.
so we are pretty much very close to the end here um like i said yeah, just a couple of little bits and bobs um little photo etch bits to add and then, then we got that wheel on what we're also going to do now is uh, i'm just going to add the the calipers on uh so they painted they have the quick release banjos added in um and we've got our spacers on the fork bottoms so again what we're going to do is test fit as always just to make sure it does fit there we go just lining it up there it can be a bit of a nightmare to do it this way um, but it can also be a bit of a nightmare to put the wheel on after putting the calipers on so I'm just gonna grip the caliper in a way that I can without impeding the fit um, and then we're gonna test fit again we want to make sure that the caliper spacers which we've glued on are at the right distance apart otherwise that that caliper is not going to go on uh, and once we know that we're going to put a tiny blob of ca on and we're just going to lift the caliper up hold it in place for a couple of seconds give it a little push just to make sure it's, it's seated and it's where it needs to be because you don't want to find out that it fits there and then when you spin the wheel it'll rub on the wheel and it could rub paint off or any decals you've put down previously we haven't put the wheel decals or the caliper decals on yet um we'll do these kind of outside decals when we go around and do the decaling on the fair ends it just seems a lot easier to keep a decal in session all as one the good thing is with these bikes and stuff that there's not many decals which you need to do before that stage anyway um Yeah, and there's no kind of rim tape going all the way around, um, all the way around the rim, like a red line or anything, which is why I thought I'd just do it later, because that way um, the wheels are on, everything's there, and because I don't need to put that rim tape on, I don't need to turn the wheels or take the wheels off. So, so yeah, we'll do that all at a later date. You can see I had a bit of an issue fitting them, uh, but then they got on, and there we are. That's... Uh, that's kind of where we're at now um so there you can see we got it up on both wheels um it's gonna be a couple of photos um like i said earlier i've been really really enjoying this and i've been kind of struggling between shall i edit a video shall i record more or shall i just build um and building has been has been taking the cake recently um but i have been recording at the same time so i've got lots of footage um, and again the next part of this build um, I think might be split into two again um, because there was a lot of carbon fiber decal in to go um, but yeah if you've enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed building it you know the standard like comment and subscribe um, let me know if I could do anything better but in the meantime thank you so much for watching have a great day and stay safe